Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zia Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at Enterprise Connect AI, uh, a brand new event. It's uh, yep. great to be here. I'm here with Alan Ranger at the Cognigy stand. Uh, Alan, uh, uh, it's been a while since we chatted, yep. uh, but maybe for those who don't uh, know what Cognigy does, just a quick, quick description of the company. Yeah, sure, great. And um, first of all, just thanks for yeah. the, the interview. It's always great to see you, and uh, yeah, very much looking forward to the conversation. So, uh, Cognigy has been around for about eight years. Uh, we were doing AI probably before people really yeah, knew well it. Before it became a buzzword. Well before it became yeah. a buzzword, yeah. Uh, and what we do is that uh, we focus very much on those high volume use cases within the call center. So anything that we could automate end to end or automate parts of the process uh, to make it more efficient and a much better experience for consumers. Yeah, and in fact, uh, if you look at all the possible AI use cases out there, uh, call center automation and AI yeah. is always one of the top ones given by almost every expert, financial analysts, yep. industry watchers, and uh, wh why is that you think? Well, interestingly enough, if you ask ChatGPT what it's good at, it says customer service, so yeah. it agrees with you as well. So the, the reason is that there's just not enough human agents in the ecosystem anymore. Um, since the pandemic, uh, it's really difficult to get great human agents into your contact centers. So there's this huge gap between you know, the expectation of consumers and the level of service they're getting. And so people are using AI to fill the gaps. So they're either using it to automate part of the uh, uh, issue resolution or sometimes completely end-to-end. -end. So an example might be Lufthansa is one of our big customers. Mm. Uh, the, the German airline. Uh, if it snows in Munich, all of a sudden the airport shut and uh, they couldn't possibly scale up with the agents to try and cope with the rebookings. And the automation can rebook 10,000 flights in an hour without a human being involved in an instant and personalized way, which just gives great customer service. Yeah, there's no real good answer for that for brands too. It's either overstaff and yeah. have most of your agents underutilized most of the yeah. time and wait for those peak use cases or have bad service when your customers need you most. Yeah, right? all great automation yeah. to sort it out. Yeah, yeah well that's, uh, yeah. That, that's what they're looking at uh, using AI for, right? Yeah. So Now, uh, as you mentioned, um, Cognigy's been in AI before AI really became a buzzword. Yep. Um, uh, we're here at the show, I know one of your customers, Aramark, is here at the yep. show as well. Uh, how's the state of the business now? Have you seen a, uh, any kind of change this year compared to years past? Oh, very much so. Uh, this time last year, people were still learning. So there was a lot of misinformation put out there about you know, what Gen AI is capable of. A lot of the vendors focused just... Everything, on, right? Everything. And yeah, a, lot of, yeah. a lot of the vendors focused just on Copilot. And all they wanted to do was make the existing humans in the ecosystem just that little bit more efficient. Uh, but what we're seeing, the really big wins, are people that are now looking at end-to-end -end automation and the really big difference between this time last year and now is that people are coming to us with high volume use cases that they're ready to invest in. They've got the business case, they're ready to show the ROI. Yeah, and uh, uh, we recently had Dreamforce, right? yep. and I think the big news out of there, Mark Benioff talked about something called Agent Force, in which yep. uh, you can make your own agents, and he predicted there would be Billions. Uh, what, one yeah. billion by yeah. this time next year. Uh, uh, of yep. agents. Uh, yep. uh, what do you think of that and what do you think that means for the industry? Well, I think, you know, when you've got somebody as big as Salesforce joining in and also it being the keynote to Dreamforce, so it's obviously they're, they're pivoting the whole company onto this. And what he was describing really is this new era of uh, what's being termed agentic AI. So it's the ability to create a personalized AI agent uh, for every conversation. So I think what they'll do is that they'll educate the market. And as with all things, you know, when the tide rises, all the boats float. So I think it'd be very good for all of us. Uh, I just hope that uh, uh, everybody that's involved is able to uh, deliver on the promise. Yeah, he did talk, bring up that word uh, agentic AI. And so talk about that in the context of customer service. How is that different than the AI we've been thinking about up to now? Yeah, sure. So, um, And what are some use cases too? Yeah, so with agentic AI, it sort of comes from the fact that the, the AI agents have agency. So they have agency to do stuff. So they have the capability to make human-like decisions to actually resolve something. And what's really important is that they're goal-driven. So anybody mm. can create a chatbot you can have a nice conversation with, you can just plug ChatGPT in, but it can't do anything. If you want it to rebook your flight or to sort out your insurance policy, it has to be orchestrated within a platform connecting to all of the back-end systems, but also have a goal in mind that needs to be delivered uh, as part of the, the, the flows. And then you can plug in the LLMs and the, the generative stuff to just enhance the whole conversation, making it a lot more natural, and as I was saying, make it really personalized to, to each individual. Yeah, so uh, when compared to a co-pilot, yep. I guess a co-pilot you can think of as an assistant, yeah. where an agentic AI actually acts more as a real agent. Is that That's a good it, yes, it acts yeah. just like a human agent. It makes yeah. human-like decisions in order to get the goal achieved. And one of the great things about it, if, you know, if it uh, is unable to resolve the issue itself, it knows it can make the decision to go and ask another AI agent, or it could go and ask a human but it wouldn't necessarily even transfer the call or the chat to the human. It would keep the conversation going with the consumer, go and ask the human the answer, and then give the answer back. 
Yeah, Alan, you know, you guys have been doing this, like I said, for a long time. And I, I think there still is a lot of debate as to whether aid, virtual agents and AI agents can actually be as good as people. Well, what are your thoughts on that? Will we get to the point sometime where our preferred interaction with brands is through an AI agent yeah. versus a person? I, I think it's inevitably, it, it goes back to the shortage of human agents. Um, personally, I would much rather speak to an automation than wait 10 minutes. I'd much rather speak to an automation and have to verify myself six times or yeah. navigate an IVR. If I can just call up, say what I want, the, the AI agent can understand me and give me a great experience and deliver a personalized instant service, then yeah, definitely it, it's yeah. going to be... And, uh, for, and how far do you think we are from that? Um, no, we, we're seeing it. So with yeah. certain high volume use cases, which are very well tuned, yeah, it's uh, very, very high. So as the Lufthansa example, again, that's 100% of the flights are being rebooked through yeah. the automation. It was working really, really well. Uh, and I think that we will see more and more. Perhaps where some customers are using Copilot at the moment in the background behind the, the human agents, they'll realize that actually they could turn those same Copilots to be consumer facing. So once they've got the confidence that they're listening in, they are understanding the conversation, they're understanding the intents, they're resolving the intents, they can then actually, maybe during peak times or when off peak, when you've got no human agents available, you can turn the co-pilots and face them out to the consumers. Yeah, I was going to, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, in my last question, I did want to ask you about that too. For uh, all the brands out there and all the contact center leaders and business leaders thinking about how they bring AI into their customer yep service areas uh, and let's face it nobody wants to do this wrong yeah because if you do it wrong I mean you're gonna drive customers away yeah. uh, what kind of what advice can you give them on how to think about that and I, yeah. and I think what I'm seeing today a lot of is using it as a co-pilot yeah. versus customer facing uh, I think well the the really uh, high volume use case that's applicable to all is a conversational IVR so you know having it to answer all of the calls and all of the chats uh, it can understand 95 to you know 98 percent of all of the intents it's being asked so you know instead of yeah, low complexity high low volume. complexity high volume so identification and verification you know understanding who it is that's calling or, or messaging understanding the intent and then using that knowledge to then go and get information from the back-end systems to either deliver to another AI agent or to the human in some sort of warm handover and that will just cut so much of the unnecessary work out of the call uh, and leave the human agents to uh, just focus on the stuff they're good at. Yeah, I think you know we need to get to a point where um, uh, we're, instead of right now, when you have to call a contact center, you dread it. You do. You <laughs> yeah, do. yeah. It, it's that uh, you brace yourself. You have yeah. a coffee. You, you set aside half an it's hour. It's really that interaction yeah. last resort. It's like, oh, yeah. I got to call. But I, but I think there's no reason for that. No. Uh, yeah. Well, and uh, and yeah. The, the analogy I've used is everybody's got their guy, your car guy, yep. right? For me, it's a bike store guy. He knows every yeah. part on every brand. Yeah. And why can't, when I call a brand, why can't they know me to that level exactly. that, yeah. you know, these highly bespoke use cases already yes. do, but they're, they're very few and far between. That's it. And that's really yeah. where the agentic sort of era will, will take us. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you're calling in, you're identified, maybe it's your calling line number from your mobile, it knows who you are, or just a simple verification. And then it should have access to everything it knows about you. But also every conversation it's had with everybody that's like you, uh, and would then be able to, to offer you this really personalized service. And I think the big revelation, or revolution even, will be it'll move from being just in purely customer service and actually into the sales and marketing side. Yeah. So, you know, outbound calling, it's going to be fantastic. You know, it'll be able to make an outbound call. If the person on the other end of the call says, hey, I've only got two minutes, it can shorten the call because it's understanding what's yeah. going on. It's dynamically adapting what it's doing. And it could just give that great experience. And if it's used um, all of the information about you and sentiment analysis, it knows whether you're ready to buy or whether the offer's personalized, correct. And yeah, it can go all the way through and, and actually close the deal. Yeah, I'm not sure I like that or not. <laughs> uh, I already buy everything pushed to me in Instagram, so yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the better they get, who knows what I'm going to be buying. But you know, you could start yeah. the conversation. But, but, in, all rea yeah. but yeah. in all reality, actually, yeah. uh, the ability to, I think that does frustrate people when yeah. they're you know, contacted by their brands for things they don't need. If you can yeah. get to that point, that benefits everybody. So, yeah, that's yeah. it. And it doesn't happen so much now, but in the old days of power dialers, there was nothing more infuriating than answering the phone in silence yeah. and then a click because there was no human available. And that's the one good thing about proactive outbound with AI. The AI is always ready, and it's ready to have a conversation about you. It knows you. It knows yeah. what it's going to say. All right, Alan, anything else you want to add? No, I, no. I think that it's a very exciting time to be doing this. As I say, I think the, the future is going to be way beyond customer service. I can see uh, the contact center becoming a profit center rather yeah. than a cost center, because I think that you know, whenever there's a contact, there's an opportunity for an upsell or a cross sell. Uh, and it's just going to transform the world. Well, it's really shifting from customer service to all things CX. Yeah. Yeah. And the interesting thing about Cognigy is you actually 
touch everything yeah. that's sales, marketing, you know, service, all those worlds are coming together and you sit at the kind of focal point of that. So I was glad to get your uh, your input on that. Yep. No, so. Always good, Steve. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. Yep. And so on behalf of Alan Ranger from uh, Cognigy, I'm C.S. Caraval from C.K. Richard from Enterprise Connect AI saying thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time on my next episode of Zcast. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Thank Alan. you very much. Thanks.